Greetings, little followers of the First Order. My name is Corbin22, and welcome back to another 100 Point Squad Bill for Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures. In this series, we take a look at 100 Point Squad Bills and discuss their competitive viability in the Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game. Today, we're going to be looking at a squadron that I've had in the works for a long time, but unfortunately, I haven't been able to implement because I lacked the ships in order, ship upgrades in order to do so. But now that the ship is out, I can show you guys what this build is, and hopefully, it'll help you in your games and um, future games in X-Wing. Uh, what we have here is we have a Special Forces tie in the lead with Darth Vader's tie Advance X1, follow on his left, or in his right, sorry, and Sunter Fell and his Saber Squadron tie, tie Interceptor um, on the uh, left here. Now, the thing these guys all have in common is that they're all pilot skills 9. Pilot skill value of 9, hence why I've given this squadron the name the best of the best. These guys are always going to be shooting first, they're always going to be moving last, which allow, and they're also going to be able to uh, um, activate at whatever you want. So basically you could have like, they're all Palatical Nines, you can like activate Sunter before Vader or Vader before to, uh, Quick Draw or Quick Draw before any of the other two, and so on and so forth. Uh, also with the upgrades they've got, it allows them to uh, better position themselves for um, uh, adequate, fire, adequate firing lines, allowing you to get the most out of your shots. So that said, let's look at the squadron itself. So. Sunter, I had to change up a little bit. Uh, he doesn't have stealth device on him because it goes over the 100 point limit with what I've got going here. Uh, that said, I still believe that what he's got right now allows him to um, maximize on both his attack and defense as well as his ability. Same with all these other two pilots here with their abilities and uh, upgrades as well. We'll start with the squad leader and the new guy of the group, or rather, I should say, new girl. Because we've got here one of the aces of the first order, Quick Draw. She comes in at a pilot skill value of 9, and she flies the Special Forces TIE Fighter for the First Order. She has a standard stat line of a TIE SF. She has an attack value of 2, an agility value of 2, a hull value of 3, and a shield value of 3. Her action bar consists of the focus, target lock, and barrel roll actions. She costs 29 points to feel, so she costs about the same as Vader and um, Wedge Antilles. Uh, her elite, her um, upgrade bar sorry, consists of the EPT upgrade, a system, a missile, a tech, as well as an unlisted TIE limb modification. Her pilot ability reads, once per round, when you lose a shield token, you may perform a primary weapon attack. So quick draw opens up a lot of um, flexibility for attacks. You can either get hit by an enemy, you can either attack, get hit by an enemy, and then you can attack again, or you could purposely run, you could purposely run yourself into an asteroid, take the hit, but since, but since you'll be losing a shield, that technically counts, or because you'll be losing a shield, that will still trigger her ability, because her ability has no limitations to when it can be triggered, as long as she loses a shield once per round. So you run into an asteroid, you get your prime, you get that free weapon attack, um, uh, even though it's not the combat phase. And then of course after you attack, after that attack and the combat phase begins, you get it, you get your your initial shot, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I think what is even cooler is the upgrades I've given her. Starting off with the special ops training title card. It comes in a squad point cost of zero. It's a TIE SF only title. And it reads, when attacking with your primary weapon from your primary firing arc, you may roll one additional attack die. If you do not, you may perform an additional attack from your auxiliary firing arc. Uh, I should probably note that the TIE SF has both a primary and an auxiliary arc, so that means it can shoot forward and behind it, making it one of the uh, first starfighters in X-Wing to come with, or rather first small ship, I should say, to come with both a forward and rear firing arc. Uh, the special ops training helps you to maximize the effectiveness of both arcs because you can either gain yourself that extra attack die from your primary firing arc or you can forsake the extra attack die and attack from both arcs at the same time provided you have somebody in both arcs. Uh, this sets up, this allows you to set up for some interesting attack runs. You can like do a signature's loop or whatever or a hard one, get yourself into line, firing line of um, two ships, one forward, one behind. And, and if they're in range one, that's even better because that basically means you're going to get, let's see, one, two, so you're going you're gonna to get like six attack die in total. So three for the front, three for the back. Otherwise, if you just have somebody in the front, you could get that extra attack die, and that means if you're at range one, you're going to get like four dice. Because range one plus the tie is the special ops training. So, um, and plus it's a, free, it's a free title. So, I mean, you'd be crazy not to put this thing on because it, 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 it basically makes it, uh, it boosts you the, um, it makes the effectiveness of your tie, uh, of your tie SF that much more better. Much more better. Well, proper English for the win. Um, her upgrade is a tie mark two. Allows her to treat all her allows quick draw to treat all her bank maneuvers as greens. It comes in a squad point cost of one. Now this I found was essential because the tie SF has one two three, it has six red it has six red maneuvers and four green maneuvers to work with. Um, the hard the hard turns are reds. The hard the hard turn one all the time. Um, yeah, sorry. 
Uh, quick draws, hard ones are reds, her hard threes are reds, and her signature's loops are all red. She doesn't have quite a grand turn, she's got signature's loops. Uh, she only has a bank for a, a, all her banks, her bank ones and her straight one is a green, her straight two and her straight three is a green. With tie set with tie mark two, this allows her to have her her bank two and threes as greens, which allows her to um which allows her nine green maneuvers in total, which helps to mat which helps to uh, ease makes it easier for you to get rid of the stress inflicted on whether you run through an asteroid uh, debris field sorry, or if you get like um, thrust control fire, or um, just run it or just perform a red maneuver in general. Uh, in the event that you can't get rid of your um, stress, I have given her wired. Which comes in a squat point cost of one, and it reads, if I can just get this to focus, it reads, when attacking or defending, if you are stressed, you may reroll one or more of your focus results. So, say you need to do like a signature's loop in order to get yourself in a good firing position. That means you'll be stressed and won't be able to take an action. With wired, as long as you're stressed, you get to reroll your focus results. So, it helps. I mean, it's not as good as having a focus on you, but it definitely helps. It gives you at least a modifier of some sort. Now, to maximize our action economy, I've also given her a fire control system, which comes in a squad point cost of two, and it reads, after you perform an attack, you may acquire a target lock on the defender. So it saves you from constantly taking target locks all the time as an action, because it gives you free target locks every time you attack, allowing you to focus more on your focus and barrel roll action. So altogether, quick draw is going to be a very, very, uh, she's going to be a very dangerous path to tackle, and you would be better off attacking her from the side than her forward and rear. Because she, she can bite back if she gets shot with the rear. Now, going on to the uh, next uh, pilot here. We have none other than Darth Vader himself. Coming in also in a pilot skill of 9, he flies the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Advanced X1 for the Galactic Empire. Standard stat line of a TIE Advanced. Attack 2, Agility 3, Hull 3, Shield 2. Uh, his action bar consists of the focus, target lock, barrel roll, and evade actions. He also costs 29 points, and his action bar consists of um, an EPT, a missile, as well as an unlisted tile and modification. Excuse me. His pilot ability reads, during your perform action step, you may perform two actions. So Vader is basically has like a built-in push the limit. Only the difference is, you don't get stressed if you do take that second action. Um, which opens up a lot of possibilities for Vader, considering he's got four actions to choose from. So that right there is half of your action bar uh, available to use. Um, his title card is the TIE X1 title, a TIE Advanced only title, and costs zero points. And this has become a must for your TIE Advanced. This basically, this basically has to be on your TIE Advanced if you want to use it properly. It states your upgrade bar gains the system upgrade icon. If you equip a system upgrade, its co-op point cost is reduced by four to a minimum of zero. So everything, anything short of a, sense, uh, a sensor jammer is basically a free system upgrade for the TIE Advanced, which is awesome. It opens up a lot of possibilities for the, um, the TIE Advanced. Uh, I've also given him a TIE Mark II to maximize on the uh, green maneuvers, because what he's going to be doing, he's going to be taking a lot of stress with the, um, with the, the setup I've got going for him. His EPT is push the limit, a common classic amongst, other, amongst many pilots. Comes in a squad point cost of three. And it reads, once per round after you perform an action, you may perform one free action showing your action bar, then receive a stress token. So Vader, Vader's innate, innate ability allows him to perform two actions in the same turn. Push the limit grants him access to a third action. So that there is three quarters of your action bar already used. Uh, the downside is you're going to get a stress, but that's why I've given him time arc two in order to be able to shut the stress easily. And for his system upgrade, I've chosen to give him an advanced hard computer. It comes in at a squad point cost of five, but thanks to TIE setup, that five that five point cost has been reduced to one. Uh, it's a TIE advanced only system, and it reads: When attacking with your primary weapon, if you have a target lock on the defender, you may add one critical result to your roll. If you do, you cannot spend target locks during this attack. So, the exchange of not being able to spend your target lock, you get an extra crit, and that crit is guaranteed. So, basically, if you're at range one, that's three attack dice plus, um, and if you nail all hits, the, you get like a fourth crit. Which is, you know, how allows you to dish out maximum damage as Vader. Now moving on to the uh, third pilot here, another classic favorite of a lot, a lot of Imperial pilots. We have Baron Sunterfell, basically, basically the second best pilot in the Imperial fleet next to Darth Vader. He also comes in a squad point, uh, um, squad point. Sorry, his pilot skill value is also at a nine. He flies the Sinar Fleet System's Tie Interceptor for the Galactic Empire. Standard stat line of a TIE Interceptor is an attack value of 3, agility value of 3, hull value of 3, and a shield value of 0. His action bar consists of the focus, barrel roll, boost, and evade actions. 
He costs 27 points to field, and his upgrade bar consists of an EPT as well as an unlisted Tylen modification. Sunter's ability states, when you receive a stress token, you may assign one focus token to your ship. It doesn't matter how you get the stress token, as long as you get stress, you will get, you will get that free focus. So, um, it helps if you're, like, say, performing a Koi Grand turn, you at least that way, at least even if you get stress, you'll get the focus, and you'll always have a modifier for your attack and your defense. Starting off with his title, I've chosen to give him a Roll Guard Tie. It's a Tie Interceptor only title, it costs zero points, and it reads, you may equip up to two different modification upgrades instead of one. You cannot equip you cannot equip this card if your pilot skill value is four or lower. So Saber Squadron below can't equip it. Fell's Wrath and above definitely it allows you to have two it allows you to basically have two different modifications aboard your tie interceptor. First one is of course the Time Arc Two. It turns all of his banks into greens, and while his Speed Two greens are already greens, his turns his Speed Three greens Speed Three banks into greens as well. So this offers more flexibility when dishing out um, shedding your stress. Especially since you're going to be using uh, his EPT a lot as well. This is also a must for all interceptor ships. It is the auto thrusters upgrade. Comes in at a squad point cost of two, and it reads: When defending, if you are beyond range two or outside the attacker's firing arc, you may change one of your blank results to an evade. You can equip this card only if you have the boost action icon. So, tie interceptors, uh, A wings, T seventy X wings, the aggressor class ship, um, uh, tie punisher. Any ship that has the boost action icon inherently, they can equip the auto thrusters, and it's very handy for arc dodging, because uh, as long as you're out, as long as you're beyond range two or outside their arc, uh, you'll always get basically get that free evade as long as you roll at least one blank. So there's that, and then of course his EPT is like with Vader, push the limit. Once per round, you perform an action, you get a free action, but you receive a stress. So this basically, like Vader, allows him to get three actions in the same turn. You can take like a boost or an evade or boost or barrel or whatever. Uh, you get the stress, but the stress assigns you at a free focus. That means you can essentially have two focus tokens as well as um, take another action of your choice. So this opens up a lot of uh, a lot of ideas for Sun Tier Fell and a lot of options as well. So this is the best of the best squadron. This is how it is built. I'll show you just in a moment exactly how it is implemented. Okay, and we're back. Uh, we've got our squadron here set up against some first order traders. We've got here Omega Ace, Omega Leader, uh, Zeta Leader, and Zeta Ace. Um, we've got here, so the way it's set up, Vader here has taken decided to take two actions to three. He's taking a target lock onto Zeta. Le uh, no, he's taking a target lock. Sorry, onto uh, uh, where's his target lock gone to? Well, his target lock went to uh, oh, it's gone onto uh, Zeta Leader here. Uh, and he's also taken an evade of his second way. Decided not to push the limit. Um, some quick draw here uh, has taken a barrel roll in order to get. He landed up about here. He decides to take a barrel roll in order to get in between uh, Omega Leader and uh, Zeta Leader as well. Uh, Sun Tears line up shots so he could take on either uh, Omega Ace or Zeta Leader or Zeta Ace. He's taken a focus and evade, and then he put with the push got him a second focus. And uh, we've got here Zeta Leader has taken a target lock on. Um, or is that an ace? Sorry, he's taking the target lock onto Suntir. Uh, he, let's say he did a Signor's Loop. Or no, he didn't do a Signor's Loop. He did like a straight three or whatever and decided to take an evade. Sorry. Just in case Suntir decided to take some crack shots on him. Zeta Leader took a target lock. Or Zeta Ace, sorry, took a target lock. Um, Zeta Leader here took a focus. And let's see. Uh, Omega Leader here took a target lock onto um, to, uh, Quick Draw here. So we're going to start by using Quick Draw. Quickjaw is going to make use of his special ops training title. Uh, he's going to forsake his extra attack die to be able to shoot from both arcs, and luckily for him, he's got two. She's got two ships in her arc, both at range one. So that means he's going to get three dice for each shot. So it's going to be three on three. She's going to have no modifier. So that's going to change. So two hits. Omega leader defends. He gets two evades. So that's fine. But she gets a free target lock because of fire control system. She's going to use her target lock onto Zeta Leader here. And now, oh, I didn't count. Oh, wait. Ah, but Omega Leader was smart. He took a target lock onto Quick Draw, so that means she can't modify her dice. Um, that's fine. She's still going to get three dice. And, oh, that's bad. Normally she'd be able to target lock that, but Omega Leader took a target lock onto her, which means she cannot modify her dice. Um, 
And that's one evade. She Zeta, Zeta Leader is safe. But now Darth Vader is going to shoot. Vader is going to shoot at Zeta, Le Zeta Ace here. Because uh, he's got a target lock and an evade. So that's going to be two dice standard. But he's going to get a third crit because of advanced target computer. And he's got two hits. He's got one hit and a crit. Zeta Leader, or Zeta, Zeta Ace um, defense. Oh, all blanks. So that's a hit, and he's got a crit to his um, got a crit to his um, hull. Uh, I don't have my damage deck with me, so let's just say he got like um, thrust control fire. He got a stress, and he has to flip, and then he flips the card face down. Now, since your fell shoots, he's gonna see if he can finish off um, um, Zeta Ace here. He's got a range two shot, so it's gonna be three on three. But he's got a lot of modifiers going for him, so boom. Roll. Oh, look at that. Three hits. Boom. Boom. Spends a focus token. The leader is in trouble. Or is that an ace? Is in trouble. Oh. That is enough. Two hits. Is that is enough? Zeta leader is out of the question. Boom. So that's gone. Vader's target lock on him is gone. The stress is gone. Zeta, Zeta ace's target lock on Sinter is gone. But now I move on to the next step. Um, Omega Leader is going to shoot. He's got a target lock onto, um, um, uh, onto Quick Draw. So that means it's going to be a three dice against two. So let me just get my dice here. So my target lock. And, oh, that's a crit. Hmm. Omega Leader is going to shed his target lock in order to reroll those two. Uh, so I'll... All uh, Quick Draw needs is one evade. She doesn't get it. That's fine. She loses a shield, but her ability triggers, which means she gets a free attack. And now that, now that Quick Draw and now that Omega Leader has Tire Lock, she can modify her dice accordingly. So she's gonna so she's gonna ha she starts with her primary weapon and two hits. That's pretty good. Oh, and that is his shield is gone and he takes the damage. And now her second shot from her rear onto Zeta Leader. And she has a target lock, so she can, now that she is freed of the restrictions of Omega Leader, she can reroll those with a target lock and score two hits again. Zeta Leader rolls his dice. Two of eight, so he is safe. But Fire Control System will allow you to take a target lock again, which is going to go on to Omega Leader this time. Now, uh, Omega Ace has no shot. Um, Zeta Leader has a shot. He's going to stress himself out to get an extra att extra attack die when attacking. So he's at range one, so that means he's going to get four dice. Vader's only going to have three. And he has a focus modifier. Let's see how well this goes. So one hit, thanks to the focus token. Vader has a good chance to evade this shot because he has an evade token on him. Not that he needs it. He's got three evades. So like that, Vader evades the shot. And Quick Draw made use of her ability as well as the Special Ops training. And of course, Sunterfell made use of his ability because of push and all that stuff. So yeah, this is how the best of the best squadron works. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Any constructive criticism is greatly appreciated. If you like, you may use this build for any competitive or casual play, or you can tweak it or revamp it to your own specifications. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate your continued support. And remember, my loyal followers, the dark side will always be with you. Glory to the First Order!